right, cool. All right, here we go. We've got the rest of the inverse trick. So just like that warm up today, that last one, the cosecant, we're gonna be doing that as well today. So here we go. So this is like a review from yesterday. There's really not a whole lot new, or there actually, the only thing that's new is looking at what side of the unit circle that we have to restrict these um, reciprocal functions to. That's really all that's different. So we've got all other trig. That's, I know it doesn't say that at the top, so maybe we should add that. This is the all other inverse trig functions, because that's what I'm naming it on Google Classroom, and that's what I'm naming it on the homework record. Okay, so this is the rest of them. Just like we had all other graphing, now I have all of other inverse trigs. So tan inverse, cotangent inverse, cosecant inverse, secant inverse are the ones we're going to be looking at. And of course they have restrictions just like their reciprocal functions do. So cosecant inverse is the first one. It shares the restriction of its reciprocal. The reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So it's going to have the same exact restrictions that sine inverse had. And yesterday we learned that sine inverse only deals with the right-hand side of the unit circle. So there's that, okay? On the flip side, secant inverse is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's gonna share the restrictions of its reciprocal, which is cosine inverse. And cosine is restricted to the top half of the unit circle. So just stuff, it's easy to remember. The reciprocal functions have the same exact restrictions as the regular function. So it's not really a whole lot new you have to remember. To see the restriction for tangent though, we have to look at its graph. Now tangent, if we look at that, it's gonna pass the vertical line test. Is it also gonna pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Tangent passes the horizontal line test, but only in between its asymptotes. Because you, you have to stop at those walls. You can't go past those walls. So neither can the horizontal line test. So it does have restrictions even though it does pass both because it has asymptotes, so automatically it has those restrictions, okay? So it's gotta be in between the asymptotes. So the asymptotes here are negative pi over two and positive pi over two, but hey, that's the same as the sine inverse, which is the same as the cosecant inverse. So tangent also is restricted to just the right-hand side of the unit circle between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay. For cotangent, it's the opposite of that. Okay. It's going to follow along the same lines, but its asymptotes are in different places. So yeah, cotangent is going to pass the horizontal line test, but only in between its asymptotes. Okay. So it passes the horizontal line test between zero and pi. We can't go between, like these are two cycles. You have to use one cycle. So from zero to pi are the asymptotes that we would go off of, or zero to negative pi. But we like to do with the positive ones. So zero to pi. So it's restricted to the top half, just like cosine is, just like secant is. Okay. That's where the inverse trig functions are gonna be located. So all in all, we've got um, sine, cosecant, and tangent are the right hand side. Cosine, secant, and cotangent are the top. Okay. So now let's look at some questions. We're gonna look at some that are on the circle first. And we gotta make sure that we are in radians, although we are gonna be switching back and forth today, okay? So first of all, we've got tan inverse of negative one. So basically what this is asking is where on our circle is tangent negative one? Okay. You're not gonna have the wordings there when you see a math question. You're just gonna see something like tangent inverse of negative one. But this is what you should be thinking in your head as you look at that question in the math. So where on the circle is tangent negative one? Remember, this is arc tangent, and tangent only deals with the right-hand side of the unit circle. So we need to draw a little sketch. Okay, so we're only looking at the right-hand side. 
Now, and we also have to remember what tangent is. Tangent is equal to what over what? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Okay. So notice that's a negative one. So would a sine over cosine be negative one in the first quadrant? No. So that means it's got to be in the fourth quadrant. It's got to be down here. But to be a one or a negative one, that means the numerator has a number, and in the denominator, it's got the same number in it. One of them has to be negative. So there's only one angle that has the x and the y value using the same numbers. What angle is it, or what kind of an angle is it? Well, pi over 4. Pi over 4. Yes, it's down in here. And the x value would be a square root of 2 over 2, and the y value would be a negative square root of 2 over 2. We've got the same thing, except one of them is negative. But we need one of them to be negative. That's how we're going to get the negative 1. But it's not pi over 4, because that's positive. We're going in the negative direction, because we're in that fourth quadrant. So negative pi over 4, right? And that's the answer. So I know there was a lot of talking and explaining there, but it's just looking for the angle. Anytime you see that inverse, that little negative 1 exponent, it just wants the location of the angle. That's it. Okay. So that's tangent. And number two, it says cotangent inverse of the square root of three. So this one is asking us, where on the circle is x over y equal to the square root of three? Remember, x is the cosine, y is the sine, so that's the reciprocal of tangent. That's cosine over sine instead of sine over cosine. So we've got to figure out, well, where is the x over the y value going to equal a square root of 3? This is on the unit circle. There are square roots of 3s in there. Yeah, they are followed up with an over 2 part, but that just means, you know, we have to flip the second and multiply so we get that, that 2 to cancel, okay? So we have to think about where that's going to be. So when you do that, you might have to guess and test it out and see if your guess works. But first of all, we don't have to guess about this part. Cotangent inverse only deals with the top half of the unit circle. So we're only looking up there. Okay, That's a positive square root of 3. That would be cosine over sine equals the square root of 3. So which quadrant is that not in? Not in quadrant 2. Yeah, because that would have a negative in there. So it's got to be in quadrant 1. So we've got to figure out what that, what that would be. So I'm going to guess something. I want a square root of 3 in the numerator, obviously, because wouldn't this be like an over 1 situation? So that means I want to guess. I want to try out this angle, that pi over, this is pi over 6, okay? Because it starts off with the x being square root of 3 over 2. And what's the y value there? 1 half. One half, right? I want to start off with that because I know I need the square root of 3 in the numerator. And here, I will have a square root of 3 in the numerator. And that's my x value. And cotangent is x divided by y, cosine divided by sine. So let's test it out. Square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That means i got to flip the second and multiply. What do I multiply by? 2 over 1. Two over one. Oh, aren't the 2's going to cancel? Am I going to get the square root of 3? Yes. So good guess. It had to have been one of them that had a square root of 3 in it. Okay, so use your clues to help you figure it out. Okay, so the angle at this location is pi over 6, positive pi over 6. Number three, arc secant. Secant only deals with what side of the unit circle? Uh, top half. The top half, right. So it's just like cosine just like cotangent, okay? But also, we're dealing with secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So we have to flip this. Flip instead, and that's how they're getting the cosine of the square root of three over two. Because we, we recognize better where the cosine is versus the secant on the unit circle. And just to make sure that you see how 2 square root of 3 over 3 turns into square root of 3 over 2, if you flip it to get the reciprocal, which is cosine, you would have 3 over 2 square root of 3, right? Mm -hmm. 
can you ever leave a radical in the denominator? No. no. So we have to multiply top and bottom by radical 3 to rationalize it. We would get 3 square root of 3 in the numerator. And then anytime you multiply a radical by itself, the 3 gets to come out, but it's got to multiply with the 2 that's already there. So what's in the denominator now? A 6. And can't we reduce that 3 over 6? Yes. 3 goes into 6 how many times? Twice. Twice. So it really does, you flip it to get the reciprocal, which is cosine, and you really do get the square root of 3 over 2 in case you weren't sure. Okay. So you might have to do that kind of math to verify with yourself. Okay what that cosine will be. So now we know what we're looking for. We're looking for arc cosine of the square root of 3 over 2. That We just want to know where the angle is for that secant. We just want arc secant, so we want to know the angle. Okay. So remember, we're only dealing with the top half of the unit circle. And we already know that cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. When the cosine is square root of 3 over 2, what's the sign? What angle is this, guys? I over 6 is struck again. Okay, so when you have a reciprocal function, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find its reciprocal. Find the, its reciprocal function, because we know those, they're on the unit circle. Then once you know where that is, then that's going to be the same angle that the secant or cosecant or whatever is using. Okay, any questions on the on the circle? All right, get your calculators ready for the next part then. Because yeah. now we're going to be dealing with the off-circle questions. So off the circle means that it's not on the unit circle, which means we get to use our calculator. But you got to pay attention to what it wants it to be in. It'll tell you if it wants it to be in degrees or radians. You'll be able to tell the difference, okay? So for number four, it says evaluate to four decimal places. Yeah the cotangent inverse of 0 0.56, but like Sydney was saying earlier, we don't have a cosecant button, just like we don't have a cotangent button. But remember, we did these a, like a week ago. We do have a tangent button, and cotangent and tangent are reciprocals of each other. So we don't have a cotangent button, so we have to use tangent instead, but that means we have to reciprocate the 0 0.56. All you gotta do is put one over that decimal. 1 over 0.56, just like we did like a week and a half ago. It's probably like a week and a half. All right, so this is what you have to type into your calculator. So you should test that out. Make sure you're in radians, and make sure you get 1.0603. Are you getting it? I don't know how to use the phone one. You don't know how to use the phone one? It should be the same as this one. So if you're using this calculator, same as the iPhone, you first yeah. need to type in 1 divided by 0.56 equals. And you get that decimal, 1.7857. Then you have to take the second tangent. Are you using a different one now? Yeah, I'm just saying one. Okay. Well, that's fine. Are you guys getting it? All right, cool. So let's try the next one. Number five, arc secant of negative 2.35. Secant is the reciprocal of what? Cosine. cosine. So this should be the arc cosine, cosine inverse of 1 over negative 2.35. We've got to reciprocate what's inside the parentheses there. You've got to flip it. When you flip something, you just put 1 over it. Okay. So we're going to type that in. Give you guys a head start so you can practice it and make sure that you guys are getting it. If you have one of the nicer calculators, you just have to hit second or shift, then cosine, uh, and I'll give you the inverse. One divided by negative 2.35, close parentheses. If you're in this one or the iPhone, remember you can't use that on a test, you have to do one divided by 2.35, make it negative, equals, and then second cosine. Is this what you're all are getting? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go out uh, four decimal places, just like we did on the first one. So that would be 2.0103. Yeah. Okay. Now in number six, look at the instructions. 
What does it say that's important to us right now? The nearest degree. Nearest degree. So we got to switch modes. Got to change it to the degree mode. First off, if you keep it in radians, you'll be sad. You won't get a right answer. And it wants to be arc tangent of negative 8.456. Well, arc tangent, we have a button for tangent inverse. It's basically tangent inverse of negative 8.456. So I'll give you guys a head start on that. If you have one of the nicer calculators, again, you just type it in the way you see it. Second tangent to get that arc tan. Um, if you're using one like this, you have to type in 8.456. Then you hit the plus minus button next to the equal sign to throw in that negative. And then second tangent. So it says to the nearest degree. So that means nearest whole number. What would be the nearest whole number here? Negative 83. Negative and this is a degree. So you got to put that degree symbol. If you don't put the degree symbol, then that tells me that you didn't know if it was degrees or radians, and you need to know. All right, so there's that one. Number seven, we've got the cosecant of tangent inverse of the square root of two. So we first need to start here, okay? Tangent inverse, this is actually an off-circle problem, obviously, because we're only dealing with off-circle, so I want to remind you of that. Yes, there are some square root of twos on our unit circle, but their sine and cosine are square root of two over what? Over two. So tangent being sine over cosine, there's no way that you would still have a square root of two in it. Because anytime we have a, that pi over four angle and you divide sine over cosine, it's gonna end up being a one or a negative one, just like we saw um, over here, okay? So it's off the circle, which means we have to use a special triangle that reference triangle. So first of all, we need our grid, and we're dealing with tangent inverse. Tangent is only which side of the unit circle? The right side. Yeah, not Sokotoa yet, but we will, we will. Okay, so the right-hand side. Now that's a positive square root of two, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so is it in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant? The first. The first. So our reference triangle is gonna be up in that first quadrant. Theta is always the central angle connected to the origin. And now we need to think Sokotoa. But that means I need a numerator and a denominator. So how can I make the square root of two a fraction? Over Put it over one. And remember, tangent is opposite over what? Adjacent. Adjacent. So opposite the angle is the side across. So that would be where the square root of two goes. The adjacent is the bottom side, so that will be where the one goes. What side do we need to find? The hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, right. So that will go, I have my a and my b, that's one squared plus the square root of two squared equals, I'll just call it c squared, because that's a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always denoted with the letter c. And here's the confusion. A lot of students still get stuck right here, but you're a squaring a square root. Those are inverse operations of each other. Anytime you square a square root, it takes the square root off. So what does this become? It's a two. We know one squared is just one. So that's a three is equal to c squared. And then what do we do? Square root it. So square root of three is the hypotenuse. So I can add that to my picture. Okay, so now I've got that done. Now it's asking for the cosecant at that location. Well, we have to remember Sokotoa, but cosecant isn't Sokotoa, but what relates to cosecant? Sine. sine. So the so of Sokotoa. So sine is opposite over what? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So that means that cosecant would be what? Hypotenuse over opposite, right? So that leads me to my answer. So cosecant of theta is going to equal hypotenuse over opposite. The hypotenuse is the square root of three. What's opposite the angle? Square root of two. Square root of two. Can I leave my answer like that? No. 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 We have to do what top and bottom? Multiply by the square root of two. Multiply by the square root of two, right? We can't have a radical in the denominator. We got to get rid of it. We got to make it a perfect square. So square root of three times square root of two is square root of what? 
6. And what's the denominator? 2. A 2. And so the cosecant is square root of 6 over 2. So when it's not a decimal, you're going to be using um, a reference triangle pretty much on that one, on that type. All right, so if you flip it over to the back, that's where the homework is. So pretty much all of these are going to be in radians, I believe. Yeah, all of these are radians. Well, let me double check on four. That one looks like a degree, so let me double check on that one. Um, go out four decimal places, just like the, um, just like the, the notes. Let me check this real quick. I think everything's going to be in radians on this assignment, guys. So let me double check because there's two that I'm not sure of, like the number four and number seven. Yeah, everything's in radians. Everything's in radians. So keep it in radian mode. And for number 10, that is a letter T, which means you're going to have a variable in your answer. Okay. Just try it. Just try it. Okay. This one is a challenging one. Okay. But give it a shot. Don't leave it blank. Try to do it. Okay. At least try to do something with it. You're using a reference triangle, and it's the sign of T, which means, I'll give you a little bit of a hint, for sign, you need a fraction. The sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So how can we make T a fraction? And then you have your opposite over hypotenuse with your reference triangle. Okay. So give it a shot. Try to do it. If you don't arrive at the right answer, it's okay. You tried it. That's what I wanted. Trying it is better than not trying it. Oh, yes. <laughs> How did it go yesterday, babe, with your lesson? 